Sorry. It's March, and with that comes March Madness. The eyes of the entire United States are fixed on the sport of basketball. College kids like me living their dream, playing for a national championship. This seems great, but there's another side to this. That's forced athleticism. Forced athleticism is where a child or anybody of any age is forced to participate in athletic events for money for other people. Uh, when I began to dig into forced athleticism, I honestly couldn't find too much on the subject. Then I came across an article about forced athleticism in the sport of basketball. I love the sport of basketball. I grew up watching and playing it. I was watching when my Cleveland Cavaliers won the championship in 2016. The fact that this happens in this sport was pretty shocking. Uh, athletes from Africa are targeted by American basketball agents. The agents will set up basketball camps over there, much like the ones we have here, uh, to scope out the tallest and most athletic teams. The agents then offer them the chance to play in college and possibly in the pro. The agents now hold the rights to this kid. They are then shipped to high schools or across the country of America where the agents get a cut of any money they're offered. So that would be scholarships or after college if they make it to the pros. One agent alone brought over 250 African players to the U.S. Uh, from what I could find, this was about an average number uh, for one agent to bring. If one man can bring this many people, then we know it's a major problem. These kids want to play basketball, much like we do, but they're told what school they can attend and they're not treated with any respect. They're basically just dumped in this country with nobody. In 2015, the Department of Homeland Security raided the Faith Baptist Christian Academy in Georgia and discovered 30 young boys, mostly Dominican, had been living in the campus gym, sleeping on the floor. Apparently, these students had been there since around 2015. It's either perform at a high level or be cast aside for new players to come in. This is exploitation. Soccer is another sport where this is very common. In soccer, children as young as 10 years old are signed to soccer clubs. Now, soccer requires that a team pay a large sum of money to another team if they want to sign a player. So there's no real player for player trade. So soccer clubs are literally selling these children to other teams. Uh, this hits Africa as well. So the basketball and soccer are both hitting Africa. However, it's much more widespread than just the continent of Africa. Soccer is a world sport and therefore is affecting the entire globe regardless of culture, regardless of European, African, South American, North American. Uh, an article titled Living the Dream states that there are roughly 1,500 young African players trafficked per year. Teams in the countries of Spain, Denmark, and the United Kingdom have all been sanctioned for illegally signing children. Now these children want to play soccer, it's their dream, but they have no control over where they play. They may be shipped halfway across the world without their family and with no friends. Now in some countries, Olympic athletes are not given a choice and may not even like or even love the sport that they're forced to compete in. Children are seen by the government and the government's Olympic committee and taken from their homes to train against their will. Uh, that, that was the case for Olympic gymnast Nadia Comaneci. The Romanian government saw her playing on the monkey bars, like we have out here in the playground, and they took her from her parents. They told her parents that this would be a better lifestyle. She would obtain you know, wealth, glory, gold medals. But, however, she didn't see any of those gold medals. The, it was kept by the government, and so was the one. Now, Nadia was a great gymnast. She did win gold medals, but she had no choice, and she didn't even get to keep them. There are countless others in the same boat as Nadia, being forced to love a sport they want nothing to do with, being forced to train while they're injured, while they're sick, and nobody really cared that they were sick or injured. The government spins this as a better life for a child. As I said, they told her family that she would be wealthy and they would become wealthy, when in reality, it's much worse. Most of the time, these kids don't even receive payment. In, in an investigation from, a, from some German broadcasters and a media company in Holland, 
more and more Kenyan and Ethiopian athletes have been coerced into changing their national alliance to countries such as Bahrain, um, Azerbaijan, and other countries like that, only for their prize money to be stolen. And the government also keeps their gold medals and they're treated like slaves. So the way this can be stopped, which is, I'm sure is the question that you're all asking, this can be stopped through spreading the word that this is a problem. We hold sports at such a high level that nobody wants to think anything like this can happen. We've seen human trafficking happen around sports, but it couldn't happen in them, could it? Wherever there's money, there's crime, and sports is no different. Certain cultural backgrounds can be more easily taken advantage of. Those in poverty can also, um, sorry, those in poverty can be targeted by the agents promising them wealth, money, and fame, when in actuality, all the wealth goes straight to the agent. The family willingly gives up their child because they think they're gonna get all this wealth. So the agents just get richer. Private high schools that churn out high-level athletes year after year should be investigated to make sure that they're doing everything right. I'm not saying that all private high schools are doing things wrong and all of them are involved in this, but I'd rather be sure. The agents that sign these kids also need to be investigated. They are the traffickers. Now I know these kids will make money if they make it big, but the agents making two to three times more than they are. And making money off of if they have shoe contracts or anything like that. This is a huge issue that no one's talking about. If social workers spread the word and be the voices for these kids who are too young to speak for themselves or too afraid because they won't get to live their dream, then we can help eliminate this problem. What is wealth and gold compared to a human life? Thank you.